Welcome back to Biz Today. I am Nazreen Ibrahim, and yes, we're talking with our special guest in studio from Oricon, South Africa. Abbas Jamie is the Director for Innovation and Transformation in Africa. Now, we were talking about design thinking, which I know is a new concept to businesses. And the way you explained it about Oricon, South Africa, is that it's not a solution that you present to clients, but rather a new way of thinking that you embed in company culture and in company solutions that are being created. So we talked about storytelling. We were talking about that during the break. Can we explore that idea a bit more and how it's being uh, fused into solutions, hard technical solutions that you're presenting to clients? Yeah. Why is this important for entrepreneurs? So I think um, specifically in the African context, we know Africa is very rich when it comes to storytelling. You know, whether it's our music, our art, um, storytelling is a very important part of, of African culture. And so we say in design thinking, yes, it's a global phenomenon. It's, it's taken off in, in Europe, in the West, um, starting to come into Africa, into South Africa. And as Oricon, we are asking ourselves, so what does that mean for us? Are we just going to take what they're doing in the West and implement it here in Africa, or are we going to put an African lens to it? And that, that's what we are doing right now. And so we've engaged with the World Design Organization, who's the global body of industrial designers. They own the World Design Capital, and they gave that to Cape Town in 2014. Um, and so design thinking sits in their sort of realm, and, and, and not almost the custodians of, of design thinking globally. So we've engaged with them around this topic of saying, what does it mean for Africa? Um, and with them, we collaborate in around a narrative that we call African Design Innovation, yeah. and it's Africa with a K. And so you ask me why with a K? Why, why, why with a K? K? <laughs> yeah. It so, yeah. So, so all languages in on the continent refers to Africa with a K, whereas the West will refer to Africa with a C. And so it's this this, this narrative about saying, <clears throat> as Africa, we need to take ownership of our destiny, of our future. And so it's an inward-looking-out approach to things, whereas the Africa with a C is very much from an outward-looking-in, a donor approach to Africa. Right. And so the whole concept around African design innovation with a K is saying, let us as Africans start defining what design means for Africa, and let us start putting that African story to this whole concept of design thinking. And so another example of, of, of how we are implementing that um, we have a community photographer that's doing a public transport trip from Cape Town to Dar es Salaam. Um, and he's a, a, a photographer that operates on the fringe of, of, of the normal uh, photographers. Just launched his book in Europe. And, but he has this talent to really capture the, the imagination of people, the emotions of people in his photos. So he takes really beautiful photos. And we're saying we want to be part of this journey. And he's like, why? You want to, as an engineering company. But why it's important for us, we have hundreds of transport engineers. And they design systems across the whole of Africa. But we sit in very fancy offices when we do that. And so when you talk about from a design perspective and an African story, how do we get our engineers to be more empathetic for the end user? And so by going with this photographer, Yasso Bulli, on this journey, we are going to have a very rich visual story of a public transport community on the African continent. And with these photographs, there will be short narratives of why people are actually traveling. Um, and we believe it's going to be a very rich and, 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 and interesting story that's going to come out of that. We want to be able to take those photos to our engineers and say, these are the people that you are designing for. Take those photos to our transport clients and say, we shouldn't be designing for you, we should be designing for your end user. Um, and we believe through that you, you start creating empathy for people. Um, and so if we can start spreading that sort of uh, type of thinking across all engineers, we believe we'll start coming up with much richer solutions to public transport on the African continent. And the idea is then to take this um, exhibition and showcase it then globally as far as saying this is what African engineering companies are doing mm -hmm. and how they're using design to get a better understanding for end users. And we're hoping that that will start giving um, some sort of touch and feel to this concept that we call an African design innovation. And it's all around the storytelling aspect you know, and how you bring the African story to whatever it is we're designing. It's a great example that you used, uh, particularly about the transport journey that's going to happen because a lot of the time we unless you feel, you, you know what it's like to take a taxi going through dusty sand roads in the middle of nowhere where it takes you three hours to get from a rural place to the city center because you need to fax or email something. 
I think the and you like the word you used richness. Mm -hmm. The richness of the solution will present itself if you have that direct experience. Absolutely. So it sounds almost like you're developing and training your talent in the company to be be more the end user rather than just being the creator of that solution. Absolutely, and I think. Um, once you put yourself in that shoes, you just view things very differently. Yes. And when you, when you start talking about innovation and how does innovation then play a role in that, as part of this journey, we've invited a, a Cape Town startup company called Where's My Transport to be part of, of this journey. And they happen to do the back end um, for public transport. So they do Cape Town to BRT, Gautrain. They're also doing the, the back end BRT for Dar es Salaam. And this is a startup that we got going in a garage in, in Cape Town, it's now been funded by Microsoft and gone global, set up offices in Dubai, London. And we said, here's an example of an African startup that has gone global because it addressed an African problem. So they were the first company globally to map an informal public transport sector. So they've mapped the taxi industry in Cape Town. And so we're saying, you know, that was never a need in the West. So there was no need to come up with that solution. In Africa, it's a huge problem, mapping the whole public transport across the continent. And so we bring ways my transport into this, this journey of Cape Town to Dar es Salaam. And the project is called Africanus in Motion, with the K. Um, and we're saying, you know, so if we bring ways my transport, we bring the photographer, we bring our engineering skills into that, we put that together, and then let's see what solutions we come up with. And I think we, we're quite excited with the outcome of where that can take us. And what you're effectively doing then is highlighting the real idea or belief that solutions can come from the continent because too often we're stuck with a uh, mindset or mentality that this, our best solutions can come from the West. But if you don't have an understanding, how will you create a solution? So that's a great example you've brought, which I imagine will be what will happen with the case with Innovate Challenge and Innovate Durban. Yes, so Innovate, Chal uh, Innovate Challenge for Durban what we're saying is we don't want to just put money and give the youngsters money. What we want to do is say, <coughs> as, a, as an Oricon and we have offices all across the country, we can give startups hot desks, so we can give them office space and access to Wi-Fi, but, but that's almost not the issue. What we do is when we bring them into our business, we give them access. So if you have, a, let's say, a transport app, a public transport app, and you're a startup looking to get going, we can bring you into our business, give you the, the hot desk, but I give you access to hundreds of transport engineers. Mm -hmm. I give you access to all our transport clients across the continent. And that is valuable, because startups struggle to how to get to market. And so we say, how can we then help startups within the broader infrastructure world to get to our clients? So, so we've got a broad range of clients across the continent, and, and that's the value. And, and it's very valuable for us as well, because I now expose my transport engineers to the latest technology that can come to market. And so it's a win-win situation. For they have the benefit of that accessing that particular IP. And so you're not feeding them for a day, you're teaching them how to fish, which is, which is far more, I think, critical and a much better approach for too often entrepreneurs come across grant funding or any kind of funding that may come into the business, but not being able to take advantage of that over a long-term period. Whereas I think if they have an access to markets and IP, it might be a better fit, which we haven't seen in previous programs, you would say? I think that there's been lots of different innovation hubs. And you know, it's again, as the continent, we're trying to find our way around these things. Um, the concept of innovation districts as well. You know, what does an African innovation district look like mm -hmm. compared to the West? And so we have, because of this massive unemployment, because of this massive disparities um, in income as well, we have very specific issues in Africa of how do you define what's an innovation district? You know, how do you get that fiber optic to everybody, and not only to rich areas? Um, again, issues which you don't necessarily have in the West. And so we need to deal with those issues and come up with those solutions. So I think everybody's trying to make the content Distribution from from our side, we're saying we want to be part of promoting innovation, promoting technology, helping startups. Uh, the more startups we have in Africa, the better. So, if we can contribute beyond just giving money, but actually saying this is our intellectual property, this is our network, you know, you can be, we can, and we can open that up to you. We believe that could be very beneficial. For a higher value uh, than providing someone with a small amount of cash, which is Absolutely. which is gone immediately. Yeah. To wrap up our very interesting interview, and I know our viewers can find more information, all the details for Oricon are up on the screen. Go and check out more information about their programs and how you could possibly get involved. What would you say to aspiring entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs who are already 
in the trenches grinding every day? I think the, the, the biggest challenge for, for, for us is that as Africans sometimes we, we feel that we cannot make mistakes. And so we have this culture because of it's led from the financial institutions that when they look at your CV and they see that you failed, it becomes a problem. Uh, and that is very problematic for, for startups and entrepreneurs. You know, so if you look at the culture of venture capital in the States, it, it's, they actually almost are looking for how many failures they've had, because the more failures they've had, the better, because uh, you're not going to make that same mistake. And so we need to get that culture going, I think, in South Africa and in Africa as well, saying it's fine to make mistakes. But when you make mistakes, just try and do it quickly right. and as, as, as cheaply as possible. And that's where design thinking comes in as well, because it's saying, don't wait a whole year before you get a prototype to go to market. Just do it quickly. Let's get the prototype tested quickly. And so you can make that mistake, you can test it and improve, and improve on it. Yeah. Uh, and the only way you can do that is by engaging with the end user. And so we sometimes get caught up that this is my idea and I need to protect this idea before I go to market. And that's the worst thing you can do. And so I've had personal experience with that. We've got a real great idea and I hold on to it and because you're afraid someone is going to take it. Um, and, and the sooner you can engage with people, the sooner you can refine your idea or find out if it's not going to work. So I think that that's the advice I'd give to, to startups. Don't be afraid to share your idea with people. There are a lot of people out there that want to help. Um, and the more people you can engage with, the more people you can bounce ideas off, the better. I couldn't agree more. You merely have to ask and you'll find somebody is readily uh, available to help. Bas, Jamie, it was wonderful to have you in the studio. Thanks for sharing with us Oricon's vision for entrepreneurship in South Africa and Africa. Thank you very much for having me. Wonderful. So we had Abbas Jamie in studio. He's the Director of Innovation and Transformation for Oricon for Africa. And we've been talking about design thinking. Now I know it might be a new concept to you, but apply your mind and understand how it can work for you in your business. All details for Oricon's programs up on screen. This was part one of our focus on Innovate Challenge with Innovate Durban, about what they're doing in Durban particularly and how they're empowering entrepreneurs and startups. Coming up in the following weeks, we'd have we're going to have more conversations with other partners, but we wanted to talk with Oricon first as they're the main sponsor for Innovate Challenge this year for 2017. As always, email me naz at sociallyacceptable.co.za. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Any questions, send them through. Until next week, goodbye.